Hello and a really big welcome to Gateway Online today. We're so glad that you have joined us. And as you might see a little bit in the background here, we just had a great weekend at our Thrive United Women's Conference. All the women from all our, our campuses gathering together to, to worship, to hear a great word. And it has been a fabulous weekend. Brad, I know you didn't really get to be there. No. But let me tell you, it was a great weekend. And today being Mother's Day, it's awesome to gather together online today. So wherever you are right now, why don't you join us and worship our great God and sing together.
to you this morning. You are our protector, our healer, our saviour. We love you and we worship you today.
The scripture tells us that your name is above every name. And we've just been singing that truth. God, as we gather today, we pray that your name would be lifted high. Your name would be lifted higher above sickness, above doubt, above above worry, above anxiety. God, your name is greater than all those things. Because in your name, we find peace. 
In your name, we find the greatest love there ever was. In your name, we find hope for the future. So God, we, we pray today that your name would be above our own name. Whatever's going on in our life as we gather today, we pray that we would honour you above all things and keep our eyes focused and fixed on the one whose name is above every single name. God, we love you. We thank you that you sent your son for us, that he might rule and reign. God, today we love you and we want to gather and give our life to you again. We thank you, Jesus, for your name. Amen. Amen. Let me give you another really big welcome to Gateway Online. Everyone who comes to Gateway is really welcome and we're just glad you've joined us from wherever you might be in Australia, around the world. It's great to have you with us. Can I encourage you to open that chat and say hi to your host, say hi to other people who are who are part of this Gateway Online community. Uh, let us get to know you and just um, check in with someone, see how their week's been going and have a chat there. That would be great. Also encourage you in the chat um, box, there's going to be a button that comes up. It's just a get connected button. It's just our way to connect with you, to get to know you a little bit and for you to be able to just fill out a few details there so that we can contact you uh, with any information you might need throughout the week uh, apart from Sundays. It's also a way that you can get in touch with us and ask us any questions that you might have, anything you might want to know about us as a church um, and just be able to connect with us there as we do this journey of Gateway Online together. That's great. But today is actually a very special day at Gateway Online and right around the world, we hope. Uh, it's Mother's Day. It is. Uh, and Eden, you're a mum. You, do you have any traditions that you have in your house? Do you like get little crockery pots or anything made for you on Mother's Day? Oh, the crockery from the Mother's Day st a stall at school. Yep. Amazing. Look, I always do get a few little fun random gifts, which are always fun. I can't go past like a spa voucher or a massage Ooh. voucher. Mother's Day. <laughs> nice. Well, the dream. if this is your reminder online today that you haven't quite got your mum something yet, it's a great chance to maybe hop on another tab in the window and quickly do that right now. But as we gather today as church, we'd love to actually honour the mums. And mums all across the world, we, they do such a great job of raising us. Everyone's got a mum somewhere. But we know that Mother's Day can also be a tough day for some people, for people who've recently lost mums or their, or their mother, but people who also haven't been able to become a mother. We want to acknowledge that today. We know that it's not an easy journey on Mother's Day sometimes when everyone's celebrating can be quite tough. But we do want honour and, and, and just pay tribute to all the mothers at Gateway Online, but also the mother figures who've raised us, showed us the way, showed us more of Jesus. We want to honour you today as well. So we'd love to do that through prayer. So let's pray for you right now. God, we just want to thank you for mums. Mums are so good. And we want to thank you that they have raised us and raised generations of faithful people too. But we also want to acknowledge and lift to you those who've lost their mum today or those who might be struggling with the journey of not yet becoming a mum. God, we want to lift them to you, knowing that even though they may not have kids of their own, they have a valuable role in community to play of raising us and showing us what a great woman of God looks like, a strong woman of God looks like. So God, for every woman today, we want to pray a blessing on them, knowing that they show us more of your character and your love and your nature. And we just pray that you would bless each and every one of them today. But as we gather today, God, too, we want to pray as we give our tithes and offerings. We know that you are so generous. You've been so generous to us. We pray that as we gather today, whatever we bring forth, however small it will be, is only a reflection of your great love for us. But it would bless someone around us and bless uh, the people being impacted through our community, nation, and world here at Gateway Baptist. God, we love you and we thank you. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. There's plenty of stuff going on at church Heaps at the moment too. Uh, we've actually got our Alpha course starting really soon, and yes. we would love people to join online. It starts this coming Tuesday, at, on, which is the 11th, at 7 p.m. Uh, you can jump on our website right now and register. So if you go to gatewaybaptist.com.au slash alpha, it'll take you to any campus you want to register for, but you can join our city campus online. Just click the city online button, and you'll be able to join and register there. We'd love to see people packing out that online space of Zoom. That would be awesome. Oh, man, Alpha's so much fun. I love it. It's yes. great. You are the king of Alpha. That's good. <laughs> Another thing that you can get involved in is our newcomers event coming up. And it looks a little bit different online. We do this once a term in each of our campuses. It looks a bit different online. We're going to gather together on Zoom. And that is happening on Sunday, the 23rd of May, after our uh, 10 a.m. service. So we're going we're gonna to start that at 11.30. That's Australian Eastern Standard Time. So you might need to work that out for wherever you are. 
but we're going to gather. Mark and I would love to host you in that space to be able to see each other face to face and share with you a little bit more about Gateway uh, and, and just any information. So it's going to be a really interactive space. We'd love you to connect there and that's going to be on Zoom. You'll get the link for that. Uh, but just put it in your diaries now. Sunday, 23rd of May, Newcomers event at Gateway. Sounds it's great. It's going to be good. This morning, we have the great privilege of hearing from our young adults, Pastor Lauren Lucas, in a great Mother's Day message. So why don't you encourage her, hit that love heart, hit the clappy hands as she shares with us today. On the 28th of August, 2012, this little guy made me a mum, and you'll see he's grown up a little bit. But in those first few moments of his life, it felt like absolute bliss. Now, there's a chance that was from the gas that I'd just been sucking on uh, previously. But, you know, this guy, when he entered the world, he only cried for a short time and then he just settled into my arms and I became mesmerized with his little face and that cute little button nose. And I was oblivious to anything else that was going on. Going on. Funnily enough, this was not the case when his two sisters entered into the world. They came out screaming, and they screamed for the like, first two hours of their life. And uh, Quinn in Kidlings is probably still screaming. Uh, some days it feels like she's never stopped. But in this first experience of becoming a mum, I distinctly remember being moved from the birthing suite where we'd had this hour of bliss. It was, we had a few hours before that that weren't so bliss. Uh, but then I was moved to the ward, and that, that's when it hit me. I felt like no matter where I turned, no matter who I talked to, there was someone or something telling me what I should be doing or how I should be acting as a new mum. And most of the time, this advice was well-intended. A lot of the advice was actually really helpful, but I became so overwhelmed so weighed down by all of these expectations. One person would tell me, you know, that he should be feeding every three hours. Someone else would come in and say, no, not three hours, it's got to be every four hours. Another person would come in and say, oh, why don't you just put the dummy in? Using a dummy was the best thing we ever did. But then someone else would come in and say, whatever you do, don't start the dummy. If you do, you'll regret it. And then there was all these, this advice around swaddling. I mean, I didn't even know what swaddling was before having a baby, let alone there are multiple ways to swaddle your child depending on how they uh, have their startle reflex. And all of this was before we'd even left the hospital. And then I was let into this world of opinions and advice and expectations. And not until having children have I been stopped in the shopping centre by complete strangers who want to share their opinions with me. You know, some days it feels like I actually wear a T-shirt that says, stop and please rate me on my parenting. Because that's what people do. You know, people have stopped me and said, oh, I'd never bring a baby out this early. I stayed home for the first month of my baby's life. Or they'd stop and say, that boy, he should be wearing a jumper. He must be freezing. Oh, you should really cut that hair. He can't see anything behind all that hair. And it got worse. I think it's got worse the more kids we've had. And that could be because we moved to New York, and New Yorkers are known for being very blunt. But just after having Quinn, I took all of my three kids to the grocery store, because that's how I roll, and uh, someone looked at me very strangely like they'd never actually seen a mum in the grocery store with three kids. And they said to me, and he was deadly serious, he said, man, you're game bringing three kids to the grocery store? I was like, we're not game, we're just hungry. I mean, how else are we going to eat? Now, what else am I going to do, just offload my kids any time I need to get something done? That sounds pretty good. I'd be up for that, but it just doesn't happen. And everywhere I turned, I felt like, there were expectations of who I should be and what I should be doing, and slowly but surely these weighed me down, and I started to wonder, am I doing a good job? Do I have what it takes? Am I actually good enough to do this parenting thing? And I don't know if there are any other mums out there that have ever felt like this, but I've realised 
that it doesn't actually change that much as your kids get older. The expectations just keep on coming. And you know what? These constant expectations that we face, it's not just mums who face them. It's all of us. We are surrounded by expectations no matter who we are. And this morning, I want you to imagine yourself sitting on this seesaw. This is you, this is your life, and you are surrounded by a bunch of expectations, each which weigh on you. But these expectations, they actually come from a variety of different places. For you, it might be expectations of work. You may feel the expectation to always be available, always have that phone on, always be contact, contactable on email. You may feel the need to put in endless hours to be successful and to achieve. You may feel the expectation to compromise your values just to get the job done or just to hit that target. And these expectations start to weigh you down. But they don't just come from work. Expectations can also come from family. There may be an expectation to always be present, engaged, and energetic. Now, just a bit of a disclaimer here. Often we think that expectations are negative. Some expectations can actually be helpful, but they can still add a weight to our lives. You may feel that expectation to get along to all the extended family events, the birthday parties, the anniversaries, the celebration, and your already jam-packed full calendar just starts to keep filling. You may feel the need to juggle it all, have the great family, have a perfect marriage, a successful job, go on exciting vacations, volunteer at the kids' soccer club, serve here at church, and the list goes on and on, and you just weigh down even further. But there's also expectations from friends. You may feel the need to keep up with your friends, with all the gadgets they have, go on great holidays like they do, and the pressure just keeps adding up. But there's expectations from culture. You may feel the need to wear the right clothes, for your body to look a certain way, for you to try that new fad diet. You might feel the expectation to style your house in a certain way. I know for us, when we were living in the States, they, uh, they style their house differently every season. And uh, you go to the shops and you're just overwhelmed by all the different things you can buy to put in your house each season. And I felt that expectation to have my house look a certain way four times a year. And it just added to the weight. But not to mention social media, you know, that has expectations on us as well. You may feel the need to portray a happy, event-filled, carefree life, all whilst eating delicious-looking food. And over time, these expectations weigh us right down. And as a result, we feel completely weighed down. And we struggle with self-doubt. We hope we're doing the right thing, making the right choices, but we never really know if what we're doing is good enough. And it's when we're down here under the weight of expectations, in this place that our self-talk can spiral out of control. I can't do this. I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes. But who wants to live a life like this, constantly weighed down by expectations? As we open up God's word together this morning, my hope and my prayer is that we will find an alternative to the weight these expectations have on us, and we can discover something that actually lifts us and helps us see things in a new way. This morning, we're going to be reading from Proverbs 31. And if you've got your Bibles there, it's also going to come on the screen, but if you've got your Bibles there, you'll see uh, that in verse 10, this part of Scripture is actually titled, The Wife of Noble Character. And depending who you are this morning will depend on the reaction that you have to this passage. If you are a guy here this morning, you may look at this passage and think, 
well, you know, I'm a bloke. I don't, I'm not sure what this passage has to do with me, but let me tell you there is something in here for you. If you're a woman and maybe you're not a wife or a mum, maybe you've lost a, a mother or a child, I want to acknowledge that today may be a really tough day for a variety of different reasons. Life may have not turned out the way that you expected and you may be grieving the loss of something you once had or something that you hope and long for. And you feel like this passage is just another reminder of why life hasn't turned out the way you thought. Maybe as a woman you sit here this morning and this passage has actually been a real encouragement to you on your faith journey. Or maybe it feels like it's actually been a constant reminder that even though you try, you just can't measure up to what the Bible says is a wife of noble character. Or maybe you've actually never read this passage and it's all new to you this morning. No matter who you are, no matter what category you fit in, I believe God wants to speak to each one of us this morning and help us go beyond living a life feeling constantly weighed down by expectations. And he actually wants to lift us into something much greater. Proverbs 31 is intru introduced in verse 1. And it says, the, the, these are the sayings of King Lemuel, an inspired utterance his mother taught him. So we know that King Lemuel wrote this uh, Proverbs, and there's, we don't know too much about who he is, but we do know two things. We know that he was a king, and we know that he has a wise mother who throughout his life gave him lots of advice, and this particular piece of advice he has taken and arranged into poetic form. So remember, this is poetry. And poetry is about expressing one's feelings using imaginative words. It's not a checklist of who we're meant to be as a virtuous woman. And it's actually a particular type of poetry. It's an alphabet acrostic poem, and we lose this uh, in the English, but in the Hebrew, the first line of this proverb actually starts with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And the second line of the proverbs uh, starts with the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and so on. And it's believed to be written this way to help people recall this piece of scripture. And it's believed to have been recalled in three different ways by the early readers of this passage. Firstly, for young men. And it taught them to choose a wife not just for her beauty, but for her practical and moral strengths, and I'm sure if we um, have sons here this morning, that's something that we encourage. You know, we encourage them not to just look for someone who's really beautiful, but is also beautiful on the inside. Secondly, this has been recalled by young women, and the poem would hold up before them a standard of excellence that they could admire that they could hope to be like. And I know for myself, as a teenager, I read this passage and I read a book that went with it and it did that. It helped me look to what I could be as a woman of God. It was actually before I started to feel the weight of all the expectations. And thirdly, and where I want to kind of sit this morning, is that it's been used by husbands and families. They would recite this piece of poetry to a significant woman in their lives. Most likely their mum, but maybe a grandma or an aunt. And they would recite this at the start of the Sabbath meal when they would all come together. And they would recite it to express their gratitude to who she was and to the achievements and contributions she made to the family. So with this in mind, uh, we're going to read Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10. A wife of noble character who can find... She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously, and her arms are strong for her tasks. 
She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed and she is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honour her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. This woman that we read about in Proverbs 31, I mean, she is busy. It is exhausting just thinking about all the things that she does. And we can focus on the particular things that it mentions. I mean, my life for the last seven years has has been all about verse 15. It says, she gets up while it is still night and she provides food for her family. I feel like I am up most nights with one of our kids providing something for them, whether it's sticking that stinking dummy back in, maybe we should have taken that bit of advice, uh, or just comforting them after a bad dream, getting them a drink of water. This part I get, this part relates. But then I read verse 24, which says, she makes linen garments and sells them. These hands, they do not make linen garments. They don't actually make any type of garment. They don't even sew buttons back on. Tim is the seamstress in our family, or the seamster, if I can call you that. He is also, just fun fact, uh, the cake decorator in our family. I cannot decorate a cake for nuts. If I try, Tim will come home and think our two-year-old has decorated it. That's how good I am. But Tim has got some skills. It actually looks like what the kids asked for. Just, that was just a fun fact. Extra bonus. But it can be easy to read this passage and be overwhelmed by what it, pres- what it seemingly prescribes of a virtuous woman. But we can actually look beyond the details of exactly what this woman does to some of her character traits. In verse 11, we read that she's trustworthy. In verse 13, 17, and 27, it's hard, she's hardworking. In verse 14, 19, 22, 24, it's implied that she's resourceful. In verse 15 and 18, she makes good use of her time. In verse 16, she's good with her money. In verse 20, she's generous. In verse 21, she thinks ahead. And in verse 26, she is wise. And these are all very admirable qualities, ones that I'm sure a lot of us actually aspire to. But I believe the encouragement for each one of us this morning actually lies in verse 31. And it says, Honour her for all that her hands have done. This passage is not meant to add to the weight of expectations of who we're meant to be and what we're meant to be doing. This passage has been used for years to honour, to praise, to recall the works that are done by women and mothers. And I'm not sure if you have had the blessing of being honoured before. I really hope you have. And there is something that happens when someone recognises what you have done, when someone notices the small things that you do, voices what is unseen, or just recognises you for who you are, and takes the time to identify these and takes the time to honour, affirm, and encourage you. It actually lifts us. Where expectations weigh us down, honour lifts us. And I remember the words this one girl said to me when we were house parenting. This girl had one of the most horrific cases our social worker had seen, and she was suffering from PTSD and paranoia. And it became really difficult to manage in our house because our house was full of girls with their own brokenness, full of stories of hurt and pain. 
And I really struggled for the weeks that she was living with us on how to manage it all. We were living in this constant state of crisis and I just felt the weight of expectation from work with the staff at the organisation, from family with the other girls in our home, and expectations that I placed on myself to handle this situation in a certain way. And mentally, physically, and spiritually, I felt completely weighed down, and I was in that place of self-doubt. I don't have what it takes to do this. I'm not good enough to manage this situation. And one morning, this young girl, as I was helping her get ready, she had had a really rough night the night before, so she was lagging behind. And so I just got in and and helped her. And she said to me, Lauren, just by the way you're helping me this morning, I know that you love and care about me. And there's not many people who have taken the time to help me like you do. But by the way you help me, ask if I'm doing okay, Deal with my outbursts so calmly. You have shown me what it means to really love someone. And in that moment, as she recognized who I was, as she affirmed the things that I did, as she honored me for the love that I had shown her, the weight that I felt was lifted, where I had previously felt completely weighed down as she spoke those words of honour to me, I was lifted. And I actually started to see things in a new way. And this morning I want to encourage you to honour those who have made an impact in your life because we do not know the weight of expectation that they are living under. And I reckon we are really good at hiding that. So you can't underestimate the power that a text, an email, or a letter, and the impact that it can have on a special woman or that special person in your life. And today is Mother's Day, and so it is a great opportunity to honour our mums. And in the moments that we have left this morning, I just want to take the opportunity to honour some people here this morning. And firstly, I want to honour all those mums with young kids. Mums, you are doing a great job. And I want to honour you for the strength that you show day in and day out. When you are carrying that kicking and screaming child to the car because you've said no to one of their many requests, when you are getting up night after night when all you want to do is stay in bed, When you choose not to get on your floor and join your toddler in that tantrum, even though it's mighty tempting, but instead you choose to show love and grace, I honour you for your strength. Life with little ones, it is a joy, but man, it's exhausting. And this morning I want to honour you for all that you do, for all the things that are seen and all the things that are unseen. I honour you for who you are and all that you do. And there's one particular mum that I want to honour this morning, and uh, that is Liz Lenton. So, Lizzie, if you're around, would you mind just standing for a moment? Liz, I want to honour you this morning for who you are. You are a woman of great faith. You're a woman of strength and full of integrity. But I also want to honour you for what you do. Lizzie, you are a woman of great influence. Liz has been a teacher for many years and is now a careers counsellor. And I just want to honour you for the care and the love that you show to your students. You have had a huge influence on their lives and I know you are having an influence in your school as well. And you are such a godly influence on your two beautiful young girls. And I just uh, want to take the opportunity to thank you for the impact that you've had on my life. Uh, Lizzie was one of my youth leaders here at Gateway Youth. She stood with me in the baptistry as I declared my faith in Jesus. And I just want to honour you for doing the journey with me. You have discipled me. You have spoke countless words of life and truth into my life. And to this day, you still encourage me in my journey with Jesus. 
So would you join me as, uh, as I honour uh, Lizzie this morning and give her a round of applause. We've got a, a little gift for you, Lizzie. You're awesome. And this is definitely not to undervalue any other mum here this morning or others in different life stages. We could be here all morning uh, because there is so much to recognise, so much to honour and affirm in our mums, but also in each person sitting here. But I know a lot of you probably have lunch plans, so uh, I'm going to try and keep it brief. But there's also another individual that I want to honour this morning, and that is my mum. Um, so mum, would you stand up? This is actually the first Mother's Day I've got to spend with my mum in five years. So um, it's great that I can honour you this morning. Um, <laughs> mum, you are devoted to Jesus, and you are devoted to prayer, and you exude love and kindness. That is who you are, but I also want to honour you for what you do. You are full of compassion. And I have been on the receiving end of your compassion countless times, but I also want to honour you for the way that you have identified needs in uh, people and communities, and you have given your life to make a difference, to show care and compassion uh, to these people. And probably about 15 years ago, maybe a bit more, uh, you identified a need right here in our church to create a place where new people could feel welcome and get connected. And together with Dad, you established our newcomers event. And you have had hundreds of people through your home. And I just want to honour you for the compassion that you have shown to a lot of people who've come through your home, helping them find a place of belonging here at Gateway. But now you are... You have identified a need in uh, one of the poorest countries of the world, and I just want to honour you for what you are doing there, teaching and training health professionals, and uh, you are showing so much compassion as you uh, deal with some of the poorest of the poor, and I just want to honour you for who you are and for all that you do. Would you honour her again this morning? We've got a little gift. I love you, Mum. And honour is not just restricted to our mums. Everyone should be recognised for who they are and what they do. In Romans 12, Paul writes in verse 10, he says, Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. And Paul is talking about how to love one another. One way we can do that, one way we can show love is to honour each other. It's not just reserved for days like today, for Mother's Day. Honouring one another is something that we should do because we are followers of Jesus each and every day. And I know for me, I'm actually not quick to honour, particularly my husband. I'm actually really quick to tear him down, and he makes a joke about it, but I do. I tear him down and I notice the things that he doesn't do rather than honouring him for what he does do. And so this morning, I actually want to honour all the blokes in this room. I want to honour you for the sacrifices that you make. Maybe it's choosing to come home and spend time with your kids rather than staying back at work and working late. I want to honour you for the sacrifice that you make when you make a decision that maybe your mates don't understand, but you want to pursue what God is calling you to do. I want to honour you when you choose to stand and do what is right when you could so easily compromise your values. Blokes, this morning, I want to honour you for who you are and what you do. Would you uh, give our blokes a round of applause this morning? And you can see there is power in honouring there is power as we speak words of life and truth over people. It has the power to lift them. Where we have previously been weighed down with the weight of expectation, honour can lift us. And you might be thinking to yourself, you know, yeah, I can do that. I can speak words of life and truth to honour others, to help others. But then what happens when I'm feeling weighed down? When we're feeling weighed down, 
Do you know what we can do? We can look to Jesus to affirm who we are because through Jesus, we are forgiven. In Jesus, we are made strong. In him, we have life. And Jesus said, I have come so that they might have life and life to the full. He doesn't want you to live a life weighed down by expectation, wondering if you're good enough, if you have what it takes. As we come to know the truths of who we are in Jesus, we too can be lifted from the weight of expectation. And as Jesus speaks to who we are, And as we receive honor from others, we can be lifted. And you can see that the expectations here, they don't actually miraculously disappear. They're still here. But the weight of them has been lifted. But there's something else that happens when we're lifted. When we're lifted, our perspective can change. Where once we were down here, stuck in self-doubt, wondering if we're good enough, if we have what it takes, when we're lifted, we start to see things in a new way. I know when that young girl affirmed who I was, as she spent time honouring the things that I had done in her life, who I was and what I had done, I was no longer completely weighed down. I didn't see it as a burden anymore. I started to see things in a new way. I saw it as an opportunity to use who I was and what I did to speak hope and life into this young girl. And I was no longer plagued with the self-doubt. I was lifted. And as we're lifted, our perspective can change. As we're lifted, we start to see things in a new way. We are not stuck down there wondering if we're good enough. We can know that Jesus is good and he is enough. We can know that we have what it takes. We can know that God has given us skills and talents to bless other people. When we are lifted, we actually start to see things more in a God way. You have the power to help someone not just feel good about themselves, but to actually see what God has created them for. Down there, it's hard to see the big picture. But when we're lifted, when we're up here, the outlook is different. We can start to see the bigger picture. We can start to see God using us for his purposes. And this morning, I want to encourage each one of us to honour those who have made an impact in our lives. I want you to honour people today, tomorrow, but into the future as well. Because there is power in a text, in an email. There is power in words that honour someone for who they are and what they've done. It has the power to lift them, but it has the power to help them see things in a new way. And ladies, on your way out today, you will receive a little gift from us. It's this gorgeous set of cards, and I encourage you to keep one of those cards for yourself as a reminder that you are special and that what you do, what you do matters. But I also encourage you to take the other one, take the second one, maybe write on the back of it and give it to someone to honour them. Speak words of life and truth over someone else this morning. Help lift them and help them to see something new, see the bigger picture. As we finish, I would just love to pray a blessing over all the women here today. So if you are a woman, I would just love you to stand and I want to pray a blessing over you this morning. If you're a woman, I'm sure there's some in here. If you can stand, that would be great. I want to pray a blessing over you this morning because I know this is how I feel and I know as I talk to my friends, we feel weighed down by the weight of expectation. 
So I just want to pray over you this morning. Loving Father, I thank you for all these amazing women here this morning. I thank you that you have created each one of them. And you know them and you love them. And I pray that where they feel the weight of expectation, that they would look to you and know that in you they are made strong. In you they are forgiven. God, where there is self-doubt, would you replace it with words of truth and life? And I pray these women would receive the honour that is spoken to them by you and by others. And it would lift the weight of expectation. And they would see things in a new way. And God, I want to pray for each person here this morning, male and female, that you would give us all the courage to speak words of life and honour over those who have impacted our lives. God, I thank you that you don't want us to live a life weighed down with expectation, but you want us to live a life that is full. And thank you that in Jesus you have made that possible. God, I thank you for your love, and I thank you for your grace this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.